wonderful human being. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope you are doing well. Welcome to southern Spain where it is slipper season. Not just the slipper orchid you see in front of you, but temperature wise for us humans, it is also time to bring the slippers out for the feet. A while ago, I started a playlist when it comes to how to know whether to repot your orchid if you are not growing in transparent clear pots. And I featured a lot of different orchids that give you an idea what to look out for, what signs to be aware of when it comes to not seeing the roots, etc. And in my case, my setup is lacquer and self-watering. I prefer to have everything white, white, white as best as possible. So my pot in that mask is not clear and I cannot see anything root health wise just by looking at the pot. Well, I don't need to and I hope that videos like these will help you if you choose to go away from clear pots or anything like that, especially when it comes to slipper orchids who do not like to have any light around their roots because they're semi-terrestrial. I hope this video will be helpful and if you think it was and it helped you out a lot, please tell YouTube that it is a good video by giving it a thumbs up so that it gets up there in the algorithm and gets recommended to more people. I appreciate that support very, very much. Right, slipper orchids do not like light on their roots. So we normally don't grow them in clear pots or if we grow them in clear pots, they are usually in a mask to facilitate blocking out the light. So what are the symptoms? Well, in other videos, I have always stated that when you fill the pot to soak the orchid pre-repot in order to detach the roots easier from the edge of the pot and the media that the orchid is growing in, usually I say look out for the bubbles because that will give you an indicator that there is still enough space between the media and the root system and the bubbles also show that there's still oxygen exchange in the pot. And then normally I would say, well, watch the water recede and refill for the soak. For other orchids that may be true, because we then know that the climate in the pot still permits gas exchange and oxygen exchange and all that fun stuff that our orchid roots love so much. And that would then also signal that you don't need to repot because everything is fine. With slipper orchids, however, we have an exception because very often our slipper orchid roots are chunky and oh my goodness, <laughs> they're so cute and fuzzy and I'm a tactile person and I like to touch things and these fuzzy roots don't come up to the surface very, very often. And there's your first clue. The fact that they are chunky, they will not be as vigorous as other orchids, but usually a slipper orchid will only send out one or two, maybe four roots per new growth. Meaning the pot is still showing signs of bubbles when you fill the pot and it will still have oxygen exchange, etc. even if there is an extensive root system in the pot. So we can't go with the bubbles and the oxygen exchange and the water receding signals to determine whether our slipper orchid needs to be repotted. We have to look for other symptoms. And one of the biggest, biggest symptoms to look out for is the surface of the media. Whether you are growing in organic or inorganic media, it makes no difference. Slipper orchids have tough roots and after a specific amount of time, they will start to lift themselves out of the pot as the root system grows more extensively. And the surface of the media will tell you if that pot is due for a repot seeing as it is reaching the edge of the pot and cancelling out what you had as a depth so to speak. It is also much more uneven. On top of that, slipper orchid roots normally do not appreciate to be exposed to the elements for any given amount of time otherwise they will fail. They need to get into the media as soon and as quickly as possible to remain viable. So another symptom you will see is that as the orchid lifts itself out of the pot is that the roots are actually showing at the surface while they will go into the media eventually the fact that they are out of the media before they actually go into the media is a sure sign that your orchid needs to be repotted. 
None of this indicates any dead roots. There may be dead roots in the pot, but your orchid on the surface, what you see as far as foliage is concerned, is the indicator whether the roots in the pot are viable. That is not something you should rely on. The orchid is looking fabulous on the surface, so why repot? If you want to make sure that your orchid stays healthy and looking lush and beautiful above the pot, then you have to make sure that the roots get into the media. Don't let it come to the point that the orchid on top shows you that there's a problem in the pot. And if you're looking at my orchid and seeing this leaf tip dieback, that is not a symptom of there's a problem in the pot. That is a symptom, a reaction to me giving it 100 parts per million of calcium and magnesium, thinking I've got a big orchid in my pot, she needs a little bit more, not remembering that in actual fact there are probably two orchids in there and not one attached by a rhizome. We won't know until I repot this orchid whether I am correct. <laughs> So leaf tip burn on that one leaf is because over supplementing. Slipper orchids being super slow, of course they don't need much and well, that's me just doing too much of a good thing and the orchid reminded me she doesn't like it. So what you need to look out for the surface if it's gotten too far and too long in a pot and the new roots aren't going in the pot, finding their way into the media quick enough is the fact that the leaves will become limp and they will show signs of dehydration, not clear dehydration to the point of death. Otherwise, by that time, everything is pretty much too late. These are super slow growers. So if you've reached that stage in the foliage, yeah, it's gonna be hard and a long road to get another fan to recover and grow properly. So we don't want to see wrinkles on the leaves. We want to have a beautiful, lush looking orchid that doesn't show us any symptoms of needing a repot based on the foliage, but we're looking at what is happening at the surface of the pot. We are not watching out for the bubbles and the oxygen exchange because the root size will always permit that in a pot. We are looking to see roots at the surface then finding their way into the media and the media level having risen substantially in the pot, which is a result of the root system in the pot lifting the slipper orchid up and out. These symptoms are positive because if the roots were not viable, the weight of the orchid with the weight of the media would crush any squashy roots. So the fact she's lifting herself out means we've got a great root system in there. Proof will be in the pudding when I repot her. I am not quite there yet, but you know, we're going to do a masterclass of repotting a slipper orchid. One last thing that should give you pause is also if you're growing in organic media, for example, the date that you potted your orchid up in. If you're growing in organic media, these orchids are always wet. The media is never left to dry out. Well, it shouldn't be, but it is always wet, so it will degrade very, very quickly. And even though slipper orchids like to have a little bit more of acidity around their roots, not to that degree where it cannot absorb any nutrients. So the date on your tag or whatever your notes say, keep that in mind. It is also a signal to repot if none of the other symptoms are actually taking place because you're growing in organic media. I would not venture beyond 12 months, but hey, I am not in your environment or your climate. So that is an individual decision-making process. But for the symptoms, I hope that this video was helpful the next time you look at your slipper orchids and check the base of your orchid and your pot and see what is going on, whether you need to repot or not, especially if you are growing these gorgeous orchids in opaque pots or dark pots because you're respecting the fact that they don't like light on their roots. Let me know if you have any questions beyond what I've just said. If you have a specific case that you would like to draw to my attention, let me know in the comments and let's talk about it. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope that you have yourself a beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.